What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 5 of Avoiding the Drop here with Crystal Palace and oh boy, if you can't tell by my voice, pretty pumped up about this, it's been insane, uh, it's been so close, looking at a league table, you can see it here, we are 17th, wow, uh, turn of fortune I guess is all I can really say, we've started to win, other teams have really started to throw away their games and it's looking interesting for us. Uh, looking at our recent performances, not the wins I was looking for, but two wins and two draws certainly is not something to complain about. Getting some great results here, really grinding out the kind of slim wins. Let, let's kick on straight with this. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm really excited. Uh, here you can see against West Brom, really fluked a result here. I've got to be honest, we didn't deserve to win. Uh, but in this kind of situation, when you're in a relegation dogfight... Uh, and I can't stress this enough, you need the rub of the green, you need a bit of luck, you need games where you don't dominate and you get a goal and you hold out for it, you have to get them. Um, people you know, think with FM it is a complete game of skill, I can't stress how I guess fortunate you've got to be in football manager sometimes. So we kick things off with a 1-0 win against West Brom, on the back of that we got a 1-1 draw against Stoke, a game again, complete fluke, 1-1 though, I will take it. In many regards, I was pretty disappointed that we conceded in the 86th minute to Crouch, because had we won this, wow, we'd be all but safe, you'd have to say. So this was unlucky, uh, but we did get the first goal of the game, and it was from our only shot on target, and it's been a crazy run of results. You know, I've had to set up to park the bus and hit teams on the counter, and against some of the other teams, it just didn't work. But in these last few games, it's really come good for us um, against kind of tough, tough oppositions. Uh, obviously here it was disappointing that we couldn't hold out Peter Crouch getting that late 86 minute goal for Stoke but nevertheless um, I, I was I was happy with this and uh, all things considering it it wasn't too bad of a result so 1-1 uh, I'll, I'll take it I'll take it put it that way but as I was mentioning you have to get lucky with FM and again here, I, I mean, to be honest, against West Ham at home, I played more positively and it worked for us. Adam LaFondre getting this 72nd minute winner for us. But um, I guess the comeback is real. Obviously, last episode, I was a little bit down in the dumps. But as you can see here, our direct style of play has come good for us and some clinical finishing has seen us win by one or two, you know, just one goal margins across the board. We did get a 0-0 draw against Everton as well in a game that was fairly 50-50. So... That's what it looks like in terms of the league, but I mean, looking at the league table now, it's 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 close. It's really close. I mean, looking at the tactics here, you can see how I'm setting up to park the bus and playing on counter. We're playing some big hoofball play. Um, you know, I've started to rotate the squad a little. I've taken off Charlie Austin for a little bit and started playing uh, Constantinoto, uh, the Cypriot. This guy, I signed him in uh, the, kind of the winter window thinking, I just need someone I can hoof the ball up to. This guy wins so much in the air. Uh, he's been a key little player for us. You know, he does win the ball and he gets those key passes away and holds up the ball so nicely with this kind of, I guess, uh, it's not the sexiest football ever, this style of play, but, you know, we are a lot of the time playing with potentially... Uh, Oh gosh, seven, no, eight men and the keeper behind the ball, you know, really sitting back and then just two up top and hoofing the ball up. But it's worked for us. And this is one thing I need to come on to because um, with tactics, and I've already covered tactics, obviously, but with tactics, when you're avoiding the drop, if things don't work, you have to be reactionary. You know, you have to respond when stuff doesn't work. And so for a long period of time, I was trying to play attacking football with this kind of shape, especially after January with my transfers, and it simply didn't work. And the problems I had were, were pretty obvious, but there was too much gap where my centre mids were. They didn't have enough kind of ability about them to cover and defend Um the wing backs were committing up, so you'd have your wing backs up here, and there was just this huge kind of gap. And against any team that played a centre attacking midfielder, they'd just find some space and you know roam a bit. And my three centre backs, they just they couldn't mark up with this kind of flowing play, especially when you're playing the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal, and they're playing kind of four two three ones. If you're set up like um, this, or even with the wing backs, and then you imagine them setting up, they kind of set up like so. Uh, I'm drawing like the reverse here so say this is their midfield area and this is our goal here with Spironian goal they're they're playing the gaps and 
even with your three centre backs, if they you get hit on the counter or your wing backs get caught up the field, there's so much space just on the wings, especially for space to roam. And say one of the centre backs goes to, across to cover, say their right attacking mid, there's so much space for uh, Williams, the centre forward, and you know that left winger to find the space. It just doesn't work, and that is why I've been switching to this new system. It's worked for us for the most part. Uh, playing with Jordan and Aka Anchorman has been especially useful, really cutting out any kind of playmaker um, players on opposition teams. And it's one of these things, you know, when you watch FM, and this is a thing I get asked a lot, people ask me, you know, how can I react to what I'm seeing on the pitch? How can I look at my squad and adapt? And the best tip I can give you is to watch a full game through at say three times speed and just kind of watch the shape of your play watch how your players move around watch um where spaces emerge watch how your team get hit and that's what i've been doing this is kind of how i came to the conclusion hang on a minute i need an anchor man so you know watch a few games through in slower speed go back into your game uh, and watch the highlights afterwards and see if you can see any pattern be it set pieces be it say um them finding space wide say it be them finding the space kind of in a gap between your midfield and defense and then just try and experiment and come to a solution with it because that's what i've tried here and you can see it's worked wonder so far my job status is now secure the board aren't happy i'm not playing uh attacking football but as far as i'm concerned um we're doing okay yeah uh, i can't I can't complain if I'm honest. I mean, we're looking uh, pretty happy across the board. I even got offered a new contract by the board um, and I managed to get rid of the attacking um, board promise now, which is kind of cool. Uh, they offered me a, a job after the last result, which was, pre it was pretty sick. Um, I have to have to be honest. So yeah, that was that. Um, the last two games I'm not going to be commentating because I've got a live stream to hop into. Uh, and if you don't know, this video is going to be going up whilst I'm away on holiday. I'm actually going on holiday to the south of France. And there's a seven-day charity live stream thing going on on Twitch uh, under the title FM Marathon. The chances are you will have seen something about it. But if you haven't, I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video. Uh, if you click that, I guarantee you there'll be something going on at the moment you're watching this video for the next few days. I think it's from, uh, I don't even know, Friday the 9th to Friday the 16th. And uh, hopefully you guys can go over there and show some support. But yeah, as I said, I'm hopping straight back into a live stream. So I won't be live commenting these games because I'm going to play them in the background. Uh, but yeah, hopefully hopefully this video helped, you know. Um, just giving you the rundown on the fixtures. A bit of positive energy goes a long way. The team talk last episode worked a treat. Getting the morale up. Getting a few results. And I mean, now you look at our squad. Morale's high in the camp in most areas. And that's something that can only be positive. And people are enjoying playing for the club. And it's looking positive. Obviously, these next two games are going to tell. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode, guys. If you could, as always, leave a like on the video. Go check out the FM Marathon live stream, as I've already mentioned. And other than that, I will talk to you guys in a bit. It's me, Jack, and I'm out.